Americans. They were characterized as being simple, as being easy to make, because all you need to do, quote unquote, is sort of hit two rocks together. And it didn't look like it was all that complicated. When we think of early human history, we often picture stone tools from Africa or hunting spears from ancient Europe, symbols of survival and ingenuity. Yet a groundbreaking discovery in southwestern China is poised to rewrite that narrative. At the Gantong King site in Yunnan province, archaeologists have found 35 exquisitely preserved wooden tools dating back 300,000 years, among the oldest organic implements ever unearthed. These aren't weapons of conquest, but delicate, hand-shaped tools used for digging and processing plants. Encased in the oxygen-poor clay of the region, they reveal a society that adapted in surprising ways, challenging long-held beliefs about human evolution in East Asia. This astonishing discovery compels us to rethink early human life, suggesting it was grounded not in brute strength, but in subtle sophistication. A new window into the Paleolithic world manufacturing technology and the way we did things with this material in the past and archaeologists can classify the time period a tool was made by the technique that was employed to produce it. The Gantung King discovery opens a rare window into the lives of hominids who lived in the early Paleolithic period. Unlike stone, wood rarely survives the ravages of time. Its organic nature makes it susceptible to decay, leaving few remnants of the vital tools early humans likely used every day. This makes the unearthing of 35 intact wooden artifacts at Gantan King not only rare, but profoundly important. These tools were preserved in waterlogged, oxygen-poor clay, a natural time capsule that kept them from decomposing for hundreds of thousands of years. The tools themselves vary in size and complexity. There are long digging sticks, likely used to unearth roots or tubers, and smaller, handheld pointed implements, possibly used for processing food. Some feature curved, hook-like ends that may have served to extract edible roots or even remove bark. All bear signs of shaping and wear, indicating they were not simply sticks plucked from the ground, but intentionally carved, smoothed, and used repeatedly. The variety and craftsmanship of these tools provide an intimate glimpse into the cognitive and manual abilities of their makers. What's particularly intriguing is how these tools contrast with what has been found at similar aged sites in Europe and Africa. Whereas sites like Schoningen in Germany have yielded long wooden spears associated with big game hunting, the Gantanking tools are mostly geared toward gathering plant material. This suggests a very different subsistence strategy one focused on plant-based food sources rather than animal prey. It also hints at a form of early technological specialization that doesn't revolve solely around the chase, but around complex interactions with the environment. This challenges the long-standing bamboo hypothesis often used to explain the lack of stone tools in East Asia. For decades, archaeologists speculated that early humans in the region relied heavily on bamboo, which left little trace in the archaeological record due to its biodegradability. The wooden tools from Gantang King now offer a more tangible alternative. They show that ancient East Asian populations weren't technologically behind their counterparts in the West. They were just using different materials that rarely survived the millennia. Challenging the stone-centric narrative. These stone tools are very unique, very important, because they are the oldest stone tools found so far in the world. For a long time, human prehistory has been understood primarily through the lens of stone. Stone tools endure the ages, forming the backbone of our understanding of early technological development. This reliance on durable materials, however, has skewed our perceptions. The discovery in Gantan King forces a reconsideration of what archaeologists have traditionally valued and what might have been overlooked. The sophistication of the wooden tools found in China demonstrates that organic technologies may have played a far larger role in early human evolution than previously acknowledged. These weren't haphazard creations. They were carved and smoothed, designed with specific functions in mind, and exhibit wear patterns that align with extensive, repeated use. That level of toolmaking suggests advanced planning, knowledge of materials, and fine motor skills. All of this points to cognitive capabilities in early hominins that rival those seen in other parts of the world. And the absence of hunting-related tools in the Gantang King assemblage shifts the emphasis away from the traditional hunter-centric view of prehistoric humans. 
The assumption that early survival revolved around the hunt has dominated archaeological interpretation for over a century. Yet here we see evidence of a group that may have sustained itself primarily through plant foraging. This adds weight to the growing recognition of the role that female-led gathering and tool use may have played in early societies. The Gantang King findings also help reframe how scholars view early technological evolution in Asia. The lack of prominent stone tool sites in East Asia once fueled theories that the region was lagging behind Europe and Africa in technological sophistication. But if these populations were relying on wood and possibly bamboo for everyday tools, the apparent absence of technology may be an illusion created by the fragility of organic materials. Digging Sticks and Dietary Clues Just by taking a stick, a simple quick digging stick, <clears throat> And uh, I know that sounds kind of silly, but you know, you'll save your knife blade and you'll save your fingers and your fingernails and uh, you won't chew them up as bad if uh, you just take a stick, carve it up a little bit, don't cut yourself like I did. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I mean, that's a simple primitive little tool. One of the most fascinating aspects of the Guntan King site is what it reveals about early human diets. Most of the wooden tools are digging sticks. Long, tapered, and shaped for penetrating soil. Their design and wear patterns strongly suggest they were used to extract underground plant parts like roots and tubers. Unlike Europe's wooden spoons meant for thrusting into prey, these tools were tailored for harvesting food from the earth. This points to a survival strategy centered around plant foraging rather than hunting. Roots and tubers are reliable, nutrient-rich food sources that grow year-round providing a steady supply of calories. They require some effort to extract, but once processed, they can easily be consumed or stored. The hook-shaped tools discovered alongside the digging sticks may have helped loosen soil, pry up plants, or strip bark from edible trees. Together, these implements form a picture of a highly adapted lifestyle built around botanical resources. The Importance of Organic Artifacts Organic tools, wood, bone, hide, form the invisible infrastructure of prehistoric life. Yet, due to their perishability, they rarely survive long enough to be studied. The Gantan King site provides one of those rare exceptions, reminding archaeologists that the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. Organic artifacts may have been ubiquitous in early societies, but without the unique preservation conditions seen in Yunnan, they vanish from the record. The presence of 35 distinct tools is significant not just for their survival, but for the diversity they represent. These aren't all identical sticks. They vary in size, function, and design, pointing to a sophisticated toolkit adapted to multiple uses. The fact that they were intentionally shaped with signs of smoothing, sharpening, and repetitive wear demonstrates a degree of planning and skill that rivals what has been found in stone. And the Gantan King tools can be directly compared with wooden artifacts from other parts of the world. For instance, spears from Schoningen in Germany and clacton on sea in the UK, both dating from roughly the same time period, show different patterns of use and design. While those were designed for thrusting into large animals, the Chinese tools show almost no correlation with hunting. Redrawing the Map of Innovation the Gantan King site forces a reconsideration of where innovation happened in early human history. The dominant narrative has long placed Africa and Europe at the center of technological development, with Asia depicted as a sort of cultural backwater. But this find suggests a more complicated story. Rather than being behind, early East Asian populations were evolving their own toolkits, strategies, and lifeways that simply don't fit neatly into the traditional narrative. Now it's time to hear from you. What do you think this discovery tells us about how much we've overlooked in our understanding of early human life? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below.